There's no doubt the horrific events that transpired on September 11, 2001 left a scar on the memories of every American. However, over a decade has passed and now there's an entire generation that either were not alive when it happened or were too young to remember it. Hi, I'm Ashley Kamrath and today we're going to show you one of the powerful projects that's working to ensure future generations will never forget. It's been over 10 years since the attacks happened in New York, Pennsylvania, and Washington, D.C., and life continues to move on. In New York City, out of the ashes and rubble at Ground Zero, we are rebuilding stronger than before, but the reminders are still there. Any visitor can see the memorials and tributes scattered throughout the city. They serve to evoke the memories of the nearly 3,000 civilians and first responders who lost their lives when the towers collapsed. But what about someone who doesn't live in New York, who isn't able to visit there? Let's say they live here in Allen, Texas. What is being done to help them educate, honor, and remember the events of September 11th? One amazing thing is the Remembrance Rescue Project, and recently it came here to Allen Fire Station Number 5. That's where I met up with firefighter Jeremy Pankin to learn a little more. Tell me about Remembrance Rescue Project and what's the story behind it? Yeah, this truck was actually there that day. Rescue 4 responded. There's actually a picture of Rescue 4 with the towers collapsing in the background and the dust cloud that's just basically overtaking it. All of the guys from this rescue had perished when that picture took place. Really the backstory about it is that we want to educate younger generations and explain to them this tragic event in American history that happened here on our soil and kind of how that played out in the fire service as well as nationwide. Now is this the only truck that's touring? There's actually Rescue 5 on the east coast and then you have Rescue 4 that kind of stays on the west coast. Take me back through the timeline of this truck and what all did this truck see? There's actually six guys supposed to be on this truck but two guys were hanging over at the station which a lot of us do. We drink coffee and you know hang out with each other. And so when they heard the box go out, which is what we call an alarm, all eight of them went and all eight died. They found three of their brothers October 26, 2001. They found their bodies in the lobby of the South Tower. So these trucks were actually there that day. They actually were working that day. This truck actually worked in FDNY until 2010 before it was retired. What state were these trucks in? Rescue 1 and 2 were completely destroyed. Rescue 3 and 5 had massive damage that needed to be repaired, and FDNY was able to do that and put them back in service. And Rescue 4, for just about a year, was the only rescue that covered the entire all five bureaus of New York City. The project basically started with some Chicago firemen that bought these rescues, but we still have the door from Rescue 3. So this still has a little piece of Rescue 3 on it as well. How was Texas chosen? Uh, well, I work for the city of Allen. Uh, and so it was important to me when I found out about this project to get it here. Uh, with the help of Chief Hawley and uh, City Manager Mr. Vargas, we were able to all team together and really make this work, not only for the fire department, but for the City of Allen as a whole. Very glad the City of Allen did, and obviously you've got a very close connection to it. Uh, I'm from New York. I saw a family that works for FDNY. So it was important to educate children about that. It was important to bring this piece of history to the firemen in Texas to say, hey, this is why we do what we do, and we don't want to forget our fallen brothers. Can local people actually come check this out? Yeah, local people are welcome to come by. There is some catches to that. We don't let anybody inside the truck. The only people that we're gonna allow in the back when these get retired from touring is the families. We'll allow the families to go inside and kind of have that piece of closure. Okay, but they can actually come by and just check out the outside and they can come get around. a tour? We can give them a tour. We'll talk all about it with them. We'll tell them as much as we know about it. The guys here are very willing to really teach and, and show the kids. And even the adults, you get a lot of adults. So, I mean, it spans all spectrums. Sure. Do y'all go out and do events in the communities? It'll be here most of the time, but it's on the road probably three to four days a week. It's been to hockey games. We've been to different schools. So we've done a lot of different things like that in the community. You have kids that come and visit the truck a lot? Yes. It's, it's hard to explain to them, you know, the towers collapse without being too graphic. Sure. A lot of times though, they may not say a lot, but you can kind of start to see it soak in like, hmm, that's, you know, that's pretty serious. There are actually a lot of very unique aspects about the truck as well. Tell me about the dings on the door and some of the other significant features about it. Sure, well, the dings on the door is kind of an old tradition. They used to poke it with a pike pole because they don't want to touch the truck last. So that's kind of an old legend. And there's some really neat logos on here. If you look at them, they're hand-painted logos. Rescue 3 has the big blue guy on it. 
and then Rescue 4 has Popeye on it. And so they have all these different characters associated with their different stations and houses. What is the significance of the names that are on the truck? On both sides of the vehicle, on the doors, are actually the people that died on 9-11. On FDNY, that's a tradition that they do. There's guys on the front of this truck that did not die on 9-11, they died at other incidents. But on both doors, Rescue 4 and Rescue 3's door, those are the gentlemen that died on 9-11. You have a very close personal connection to 9-11. You lost a friend that day. Uh, yeah, uh, Tom Foley is actually a guy that I've known for a long time. You know, he was a great guy. He was an incredible athlete. He was actually big into rodeos, which is, you know, unique to many New Yorkers. Yeah. Extremely athletic guy. He was in People Magazine as an eligible bachelor. He was just a great, kind of loving, infectious kind of guy. And to see that he still gave the ultimate sacrifice for people he didn't know. And he wouldn't have it any other way. I mean, that's just the kind of guy he was. He was a genuinely good guy. So it's important for me personally to be able to honor him and to remember what they did, but also remember who they were. A fireman is what they do. It's not necessarily who they are. What is your overall goal for this project? I mean, my goal will be for every child to be able to see it and touch it. I mean, it's one thing to open a history book and read about 9-11, but how often can you see a piece of 9-11? And if I had my way, it would travel all over the country and go to a lot of schools. The downside of that is it's 100% run by donations and volunteers, but hopefully we can start generating some more revenue to make that dream come true. And why is that so important to you? From my point of view, and I agree with the project on this, I want to educate the public on what happened, honor those that serve and are still serving, and to remember those that are lost. We need to continue to remember our servicemen and women, and whether it's military, fire and police, EMS. This is their job, yes, but a lot of times, you know, these guys are putting on the ultimate sacrifice. We wouldn't be here if they weren't there. Well, thank you for your service. Thank you. It's almost impossible to imagine how one of the most devastating acts our country has ever witnessed which we all said we'd never forget, could eventually be forgotten. But with memorials like Remembrance Rescue, we continue to build bridges to future generations, ensuring that we will always remember. about and to help support the Remembrance Rescue Project, please visit their website, 